Hello everyone and welcome to the next in our series of daily origami for YouTube. Today we're going to continue with our theme of looking at some traditional origami and today we're going to make a page boy. Um, this is a really old traditional kind of origami and it uh, features uh, a guy that's just sitting in traditional Japanese kimono dress and um, the process of making it is a little tricky. You do have to have scissors so uh, you know back in the day they used scissors or a knife to cut the paper to make it uh, this way and it actually uses a technique that we saw uh, also borrowed in the um, Hina dolls that we made a few days ago too where there's a section kind of cut through so that the head can pop through a section of the origami so um, you should see that and think oh that looks a little familiar so um, I'm going to be using just regular square origami paper which is a 15 by 15 centimeter paper and I'll let you guys know the dimensions when we're done. Um, it might be in recommendation if you guys are doing this for the first time. It is a little tricky, so you might want to maybe use paper that's a little bit bigger um, to try out first. I'll show you guys how things turn out with this size, though. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to start off here with our color side facing down. I'm just going to fold my paper in half diagonally to make a big triangle. Get a good crease on that. Then I'm going to go ahead and take and fold it in half again. And then I want to go ahead and with my, I have my two little open flaps here. I want to be able to kind of fold this over and create a third. And um, the easiest thing to do is to start down here first with where everything is going to pinch together. And then to kind of just roll this around until you can get to a point where everything kind of seems about the same and once you kind of get to that then you can just pinch down and finish the crease here and then what we're going to do is turn it over and do the other crease the other way too so you want to try to get it as close to a third as you can should have every side kind of match up nice there once all that's completed open everything up here and then I'm going to take the left side and fold it over here on that crease that we had. And then on this side, I'm going to fold right over. Now this one means that that crease is going to need to be reversed because it's not going to go right the first way. And get that part folded to the left. And then what I want to do is I'm going to take and I'm going to cut straight down through the middle. Uh, almost all the way down to the bottom. Now where we're kind of shooting for here is uh, a, a little bit ways into the last quarter of this section. Now one thing you can do to kind of got, give yourself a little guide of where you're going is to um, first just fold everything in half again to make sure you can see where your center line is. Then kind of open things up and then what um, I like to do is just kind of pinch a little bit down here to give yourself an idea of where the center is. And then from that, take the bottom part and come up to kind of give yourself an idea of where the last section of a quarter is here. Now I want to go a little ways into that, about a third of the way. So again, I'm cutting straight down through all of this. cut down into there so that we have a, everything to be able to separate here. Then I'm going to take this top layer and I'm just going to fold it over and then I'm going to go ahead and take, lift everything up here for a second and we're going to take this part that you see inside here. So we're lifting one and two sections, four layers if you're looking at the layers there. They're still connected down at the bottom though. Take this, this peak top peak part. I'm going to pull this over and then keep this flat. So what you should wind up having is this larger kind of flap on the top, this flatter layer here in the back, and then these two points behind. And they should be equal for both sides. Then I'm going to take these top layers and we're going to fold them down. And you can kind of choose a good angle here so that you get this folded down to where the cut is and we want this to come out at a little bit of an angle. 
Once you find it as a place that you like there for that, you're just going to repeat that on this side. And a good thing to kind of look at is this little uh, diamond shape that's kind of forming here in the middle. You want to try to make those two about the same as you can so that we get something that looks like this. Now, some more cutting. We need to take our scissors and we're going to eliminate this extra bit that you see here. So I will make these all the same. So I'm just going to cut right against this edge here on this side. And I'm going to do the same thing on this one too. So that we have equal sides up there at the top. Then we want to take everything and actually open it up. Just do this delicately though because you have very little that you're working with right down there in the middle that is going to serve as the base for everything. So slowly kind of open things up and peel it apart so that you don't get any extra strain anywhere. You should wind up with something that looks like this. Now I want to take and fold on all of these areas that you see here. I'm going to fold into the center from all sides. So fold in here, get a nice little triangle fold, do the same thing on this side. We're just going to keep working our way around here to get all four of these sides folded into the center. And there's a bigger area right in the middle. You have a total of six. As you go around, of course, you should see kind of how each of these meet up at the right kind of same area in the middle. To sort of create a continuous connection between all of these sides. Looks kind of like a cool little crystal design in some ways here. So we get all six of those, essentially 12 flaps, all folded towards their respective centers of those spaces there. Now the next thing that I want to do is I want to create a really good crease right through the middle. Now it's currently a valley crease. I want to make it a mountain so right along that center if I have those longest points going right straight across through that horizontal line I'm just going to fold back on everything here and reverse the crease that we've got. Make everything fold in half. Make sure you get all these nice edges kind of smoothed out to create a good straight crease all the way to either edge. So you get something like this. And then I want to create a crease by taking that top edge and folding to that first section, which is partially cut. So I'm going to just take everything and roll it from keeping that center in mind. That's where the crease starts. And then just keep everything folded over. And stuff does kind of move because there's such a little bit holding it all together down there that's in the center. So just focus on getting those edges matched up there so you can get a good crease. I'm going to do the same thing on this side too. Uh, try to, again, keep the center as your beginning point and then get everything folded over as good as you can. Get something like this. Now I'm going to go ahead and open the area I just creased over. And we're going to open things back up again. And flip it over so we're looking at the other side again here. Now I've got these new creases, these four new creases. Now you notice down here at the bottom, both of these are valleys, and that's great. We want to make the top ones valleys too. Now you can't just fold because the center is still all connected. So what we want to do is just take all of everything here to kind of reverse that crease and get it to go the right way. And we're just going through these steps because we want to make everything a little easier later when we collapse this all down into one shape. And so 
this it seems a little tedious, but doing all these steps will make the next, the last little bit here, as we push it all into one shape, will go a little smoother because we get the creases going the right way. So what I've done right now is something I'm going to repeat two more times for these other two peaks that you see here. So for example, I can choose this, this set right here, and I'm just going to go ahead again and make that crease a mountain crease by folding everything in half. We're just going to follow the same kind of steps that we followed before. So I'm going to be taking that top edge and rolling it towards the crease that I have, keeping my center as the beginning point for everything as much as I can. Just be careful not to snag on any of those edges. Do this one too here. So I've got those two creases made. I'll open things up again. Open it up to the part where the white side is. Remember where we just worked. Those are those creases that we just made. And you've got the two that are already going as a valley. I just want to reverse the other two again, just using everything so that I can get this whole crease reversed and folded towards the center. And do the same thing over here on this side too. And then we just needed to do it one last time on this last section. Again, we're folding out so that it becomes a mountain. And then folding these pieces in. And this will give us the last bit that we need to collapse everything into the shape for where we'll work to make the page boy. So we've gotten those folded over, open it up, and open it back up to that part where the white side is again, and then just make sure that those last sets of creases get reversed so that we can get this part. So we should have all the creases now so that we have everything kind of going as a valley crease there when you look at it with the white side facing up. And what we're going to do is just kind of collapse everything together using those creases. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm going to be taking, and you can start at any one of these points, I'll start at this longer one here for example. I'm going to be taking what I've got here and folding in and bringing that other side in too to kind of overlap with it so that we get these two points where that cut is folding into the center and then I can put a little pressure and just fold in again we're just going to keep doing this accordion fold to get all this to kind of pinch together into the middle and allow everything to collapse and you want to just make sure everything is getting a nice smooth edge down there on the side and the creases that we did earlier should really help with this as we try to push everything flat and uh, you can get a few pieces kind of going on one side like I did on the right here and then you can go ahead and kind of do the same thing on the left too until you can get enough of these kind of collapsed together so that you can get the whole thing collapsed in and then we'll make sure we've got equal parts on all of these sides once we get this kind of all smooshed together so I've kind of got it all smooshed together here and you want to just make sure as you're doing this that you've got you know equal parts here we've got the bigger kind of piece here and I've got uh, two peak taller peaks on either side here as well so I've got the bigger diamond flat diamond on either side I've kind of turned around here and get this part just flipped over um, and flip everything over so I have it on this side too you want to have these uh, longer parts kind of down here like legs if you can and I want to actually try to fold things over here too so that I can get uh, to a point where I have this wider area. I'm going to fold one and then fold one more over and if you flip things over you should do the same thing on the other side. I'm just going to fold over once twice and then three times 
And you'll notice how everything is a little flimsy because the center part is so, uh, just a tiny bit of it is keeping it all together. So try to keep everything kind of smooshed into the center as you can. So I've got this part now where there's a smaller kind of kite shape. And when you flip over, just double check. When you flip up everything, what you should see here is you should see one of those uh, kite shapes folded in half to the right side. And just make sure you see that uh, to, so that we're working in the same space. Um, if you're looking at it uh, the other way and you've got this guy here and you open it up, you'll see it on the left side. We don't want that. We want to make sure we're working with the other one. So we want to make sure we get this part folded over and that we're now looking at this side here. Now I'm going to take this part and fold it up and we're just going to push it up as far as we can here to where we cut everything before good crease and try your best to keep things centered it can get a little tricky here things do tend to shift a little because there's so little holding everything together at the top but try to get that folded over and then I'm going to open up all of this here and smooth it out to create a new side do the same thing over here too make sure everything kind of comes together there in the center now I'm going to go ahead and also take what you see here and I'm going to create a new crease by just gently giving a tug on this and creating a new line. So we're going to be kind of pulling out. And, you know, I want to give myself a little bit of room. Maybe about, not quite half, I suppose. We're going to give ourselves a little bit more space there in the middle. I'm going to try to mimic on this side too. so that we can see some of that white underneath, like so. Now we're going to use our scissors again a little bit here to cut back in the back. And I find actually what works good is to cut a little farther than you might think you need to, just so that we have a little bit more room to work with stuff. Um, we're just going to fold things in half here, and you won't be able to fold very far. We're just going to pinch here at the top for a second. Just to give you an idea of where we're cutting, there's this crease that you see right here, and if you were to draw a line that would go straight to that uh, side over here on the left, that's where we're cutting towards. And what I actually want to do, um, just to make it a little easier, is instead of just cutting to that edge, we want to kind of cut inside here a little bit too. So make sure you're not accidentally cutting these flaps that you see on either side. We don't want to do that. So I'm just going to kind of open things up a little bit and then just try to cut back to that point that we see back there. kind of cut a little spot back there and then we can open everything up and you should have this nice little space there in the middle and then what we can do is we're going to use that to make this tip come through and uh, ideally you want to try to kind of line it up so that it's just shy of the top and from there then you can smush down to create a new crease um, you, if you let just too little of this part come up then it kind of becomes a little hard to work with later on so it's good to try to give yourself a little space with that. Then I'm going to take everything at the top here and fold down to kind of create uh, the shoulders of my piece here. And you want to try to keep things lined up in the center back there. Get it all smushed down good. And then I'm going to take this extra that you see on the sides here we're going to do a reverse fold. So first to make sure I know how much I need to crease, I'm just going to push against this edge here. And I could take what I have here, you can even look at it from the other side, I'm going to open it up and reverse everything inside so that I can get a nice smooth edge right along here, giving me that nice little shape to the body. I'm going to do the same thing on this side too. So this is what we're looking at here is his shoulders and this is his head. So I'm working on just eliminating where any excess of that spot of the body is so that we can make room for the arms later. So that's where the body section then is complete. 
Now the next thing we are going to do is to kind of formulate this head section and it's going to be a little tricky because what we want to do, I can kind of bend this down to start off with, is I'm going to poof open all of this and smoosh it down to become kind of like a circle shape. And um, really this just takes a little bit of trial and error and pulling on either side to try to get, and, and you can use like uh, tweezers or your fingernails depending on what you're working with here to try to separate and get this to balloon out enough so that you can push down on it and um, it is really kind of delicate work <laughs> and you don't want to push on the top too soon because it actually doesn't really poof out very nice on its own you really need to kind of pull it along on its own here and try to get it to pop out Try to pull at each one of those seams, if you can, of these little sides to try to get it to poof out the way we need to here. The, the more you can get all those layers to open, the better things will probably go here. And you want to just keep working until you can get every kind of central part to be opened and once you've got all of those kind of areas released from each other, then you can start putting pressure from the top. And you want to try to shoot for allowing that middle point to serve as the center. If you can get that part to be in the middle and then just tug gently on the other sides until you can get a nice little kind of rounded area there at the top to serve as the head. So we wind up with something like this. And from the back, you know, it might look a little yucky, that's okay, it doesn't need to look perfect, but you want to try to get that expanded out and smooshed down as much as you can. This is definitely a difficult technique. Um, if you're having trouble with it, you might want to practice it with some larger paper. Um, I've done it sometimes and it fails me miserably, so I have to start over. So don't be discouraged. Uh, just keep trying and until uh, you can get it to work uh, the way you need it to to get it smushed out. So we've got this guy's head all done now, so we're going to work on his arms. So if I take those longer pieces that you see here, and I'm going to go ahead and reverse them out. I want to make them come up here from my center and go ahead and kind of get this part reversed first. I want to try to shoot for uh, matching up right at this corner. So find a place where everything can kind of be smooshed down first and you can get that part together and you want to try to get it to go at as straight of an angle as you can and this can be really hard. You want to just keep playing, playing with the angle you're working at a few times until you can get it lined up as straight as you can with this edge here. So you've got that, smush it down. It's going to come up kind of funky up there, that's okay. We want to make sure that we're dealing with a nice straight edge down here at the bottom. I'm going to do the same thing on this side too. So kind of get it going the way you need it to. And it is a little tricky because everything is really, um, just really barely holding on there up at the top. So you can kind of look and see how you might have done it on the other side too to make sure you get kind of the similar thing going. So we kind of get something like this. So I've got those two arms up now, and I'm going to deal with these legs. We're going to make it look like he's kneeling on his knees. So I'm going to take this top layer, and I'm going to go ahead and reverse things. And I do want it to come up beyond this edge just a little bit up here, but still come down to this point. So it's, it's coming up just a little bit inside here a little, and we'll get that to kind of pull out. And you want to try to make it about the angle so that it's about the same as the arm above it. You want to kind of create parallel lines here if you can a little bit. So get that part popped up and then this one too. Just give it a gentle tug. 
hug and smush it all down there. So we get something like this. Then I'm going to take and we're going to fold, tuck, reverse fold these parts inside. And you can go ahead and make the crease first if you want to. Um, you want to just kind of give yourself a straight crease here so that this edge at the top matches up with itself. And you want to just give yourself, you know, about a, not quite about a centimeter there. Then you can open things up and just reverse it by just folding it straight down and then folding it back. So we get this nice little edge to everything. I'm going to do the same thing on this side too. So I can kind of give myself the same sort of crease first. And then open things up here so that I could just fold that straight down. Get it tucked inside. So I get equal parts there on both sides. So for the arms, what we're going to do is a series of creases. I'm going to first start off by reversing everything up here. You can kind of play around with it, but I want to get it to come down so that it sort of goes straight across the body, right in the middle. Get it to kind of go like this, where it, where it comes right through, basically at an angle where this edge hits right at the corner of the leg, leg where it's sitting on his knees. So once you've got that, then go ahead and smoosh it down at the top. And then the next crease, I'm going to actually uh, reverse it out and have it line up with this edge that you see here. So I can just, if you wanted to first, you could um, fold it to be even with that. And then we can just reverse on that as a guide. And then as a last little bit, what we're going to do is take the arm and we're going to reverse it totally inside so that this tip actually sticks out to be like a little hand. And you could choose how much of it you want to have showing, but um, I'm just going to choose a little bit here to have it so that this much will be sticking out to kind of prove like be like a hand there. Go ahead and crease that once, then you just open things up and fold it straight in half. And then just go ahead and close things off and you could kind of adjust the angle if things aren't coming out right there. But you want it to look something like this so that we get this little bit of a hand that's sticking out. And that's the hand of our little guy here. And I'm going to do the same kinds of steps on this side too. So I'm just going to be folding everything in so that I can get an angle that kind of matches with that leg. Then I'm going to take everything and get it to match up with the part that's on the side. And then I can take everything and just fold it straight in to create the arms. And that gives me a little too big of a hand. Let me get it back a little bit. You can either do the creases first or you can kind of test it out. I should just fold it in first. There we go. And you can then just sort of tug that down until it's popping out the right amount there to serve as the hand. So you've got these two arms now with the little kind of sections that would serve as hands here. And then his knees down here too. Now the last little bit is going to be to get the back part tucked behind. So if we flip everything over, I'm just going to take this bottom section and we're going to fold straight up so that it's even with these two corners here. Then I'm going to take this and fold it down just a tiny bit. Then I can go ahead and take the bottom part and fold that up just a little bit, not all the way to the top. Once that's done, then I could take everything here, this whole section, and fold it up so that it's even with the uh, kind of leg section that you see here. So I'm going to kind of line up to that as much as I can. And this gives you then a really nice back view and front view for your page boy. And you should have something that kind of looks like this when you're done. And uh, 
this does stand and you can use it for displays. It's commonly seen for things like this and you can kind of play around with angles if you're using multiple ones but that should give you then your finished page boy. Now like I said this is a pretty difficult origami um, and you want to kind of practice it a few times before you do it too many for anything super important but it does look really good if you can use some fancy uh, pretty paper for it. So uh, overall here we're looking at it being about six and a half centimeters across and stands about five centimeters tall. And again, just a fun, traditional, really Japanese looking kind of origami that you can use for uh, decorations and things like that, for sure. Um, and that should give you our finished project for today. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.